and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. Today we're looking at a book called The Baby Unicorn, which I found out years later had a sequel. Fortunately for you, I do have both books. For now, we're looking at The Baby Unicorn, written by Jean and Claudio Marzolo and illustrated by R.J. Blake. Long ago, in the middle of a dark forest, a baby unicorn was born. Her parents named her Star because she had a mark on her forehead that looked just like a star in the sky. The illustration looks more like a diamond, but okay. Hmm. And she has bright orange hair? Or is that more of a reddish? I would say more orangish. And her mother has golden hair with flowers in it. Yes, because that just makes it prettier. Mm -hmm. And once again, framed by foliage. Apparently they don't do that. Good framing, though. Mm -hmm. When Star was able to walk by herself, she traveled with her parents to the river's edge. Okay, she could walk by herself, but we had to wait until she could walk by herself before she traveled with her parents? Well, as a horse, that wouldn't take long. Yeah. There, she looked into the water and saw herself for the first time. I don't have a horn, she said. Unicorn horns are magic, said her mother, and you are too young for magic. When you are ready to have a horn, you will grow one. Isn't that so, Father? But Father wasn't paying attention. I was wondering who that was. <laughs> In the background of this particular picture, there's a unicorn galloping across what looks to be a single fallen tree. Instead, he was looking at fat, pointy tracks on the riverbank. The dragons are causing trouble again, he said with an angry voice. I must go warn the other five unicorns. If I leave now, I'll be back tomorrow morning. Until then, use the house spell and take care. The house spell? Yes. The house spell. Mm-hmm. The house spell. Father Unicorn nuzzled goodbye to his family and disappeared into the woods. You be careful, too, called Mother Unicorn. And then she sighed with sadness. These five unicorns, plus Father, you, and I, are the only unicorns left in the world. Oh, that's quite a bummer. Yes, two pages into a children's book. For kids? Seven grown-ups and one baby. We can't let anything happen to us. So if there were more of you, you could let bad things happen? Yeah. Also, house spell? We'll get there. I hate being the baby, said Star. I know, said her mother. That's why I have to use the house spell. <laughs> I was giving Lux a chance to say it again. Please, follow me. Mother Unicorn led Star to a clearing in the woods. What's the house spell? Asked Star curiously. How do they even know what a house is? <laughs> Children's book. <laughs> it's not any more nonsensical than... Ah, Tommy the Turtle trying to fly and whisper the winged unicorn. It, it, it isn't, it, it's, a, it's literally a house. He's just looking at the picture. It gets better. Instead of replying, Mother Unicorn touched Star with her horn. Suddenly, Star was inside a little house with small windows and no door. <sighs> what happened? asked Star. I've made you safe, said her mother. Now I am the house, and you are inside me. Okay? Yes. A unicorn transformed into a house to trap another unicorn. Uh -huh. Continue? But there's no door, cried Star. I can't go out and play. Exactly, said her mother, or rather, said the house. And if you can't go out... No one can come in. But it's... We're talking about dragons here, and this doesn't look like an armored stone building. It's got a thatched roof for sake. I yes. Mean, that can catch on fire. Yes, and also, how is there a path leading up to it in a small clearing? Because the house wasn't there before. Yeah, and why is there a barrel of water with no spout leading into it? No, oh, no, see, there's... The plug right there. Yeah, I'm talking about uh, normally those kind of barrels are left underneath a spout to catch the water. Okay, well, the house wasn't there before, so... Yeah, I'm just saying. Also, it's got some nice trimmed, nicely shaped foliage with horns on them. 
Yes, on the path leading up to the house that's supposed to keep the baby unicorn safe. You'd think you'd not have anything like that to not direct anyone directly towards it. Yes. All right. On the table in the little house, why does it need a table? Were piles of meadow grass and daisies. Where did those come from? Sorry for people who are actually interested in the story, but... Star ate them quickly. On the walls were pictures of the seven grown-up unicorns. This is a detailed house. Star read their names aloud. Mother, father, it would not be labeled that way. Aunt Lace, Uncle Snow, Aunt Zane, and Uncle White. Where's my picture? she asked. Someday it will be there, said her mother. Now then, settle down. I will tell you a story. It will be a while before father returns. Well, a story within a story. Now we're getting Inception style. Or, in our cases, paprika. <laughs> but Star was too excited to settle down. Instead, she called out the window for her friend, Dixie Bluebird. Dixie flew in the window and said, What's the matter? I can't go out, said Star. Will you play inside with me? All right, said Dixie. Hmm, what was that about if uh, Star can't go out, no one can come in? Yeah, windows can open. Yeah. And so the bluebird and the unicorn played tag around the table, but it wasn't a good game because there wasn't enough room. Star sat down and Dixie sat on her shoulder. Mother, said Star, please tell us a story now. Tell the one about why there are so few unicorns. Oh, backstory. Yay. Well, we need to know this. I'm pretty sure it's relevant to the plot. And those are interesting dragons. Yes, uh, quite a ways off from Dorian from Whisper the Winged Unicorn. Yep. Also, everything's on fire. Not everything. Well, everything in the foreground. Once upon a time, her mother began, there were many dragons and many unicorns. For hundreds of years, we lived together in peace. But then the dragons grew jealous of our magic horns. One day, a dragon killed a unicorn and stole its horn. An alicorn? No. Oh, stole an alicorn, yes. Yep. That's what they're called, people. The horns are called alicorns. In the dragon's hands, the horn's magic turned evil and made the dragons hate the unicorns. Whoops. Well, they were already jealous. The dragons tried to kill the unicorns, but the unicorns fought back. They fought terrible battles, and many dragons and unicorns died. That was a long time ago. Since then, the dragons and the unicorns have struggled to survive. Every now and then, the dragons attack us because they are still filled with evil magic. We don't fight back because now, with so few of us left, we can't. Um, strategy? Maybe? There is only one answer. What is it? asked Star, even though she knew. Well, we don't, and we're reading the book. Father discovered an answer in the unicorn book, said her mother. He found an eight-horn friendship spell for changing enemies into friends. Uh-huh. It may work. The only trouble is, the spell calls for eight adult unicorns. Uh-huh. Eight unicorns with full-grown horns, said Star proudly. When I get my horn, I'll be able to help with the spell. Uh-huh. But when are you going to get it? asked Dixie. I don't know, said Star. I wish it would hurry up. Night fell in the forest, and Star fell asleep in a bed of hay in her little house. Dixie slept nearby to keep her company. In the morning, Star awoke and found fresh grass and daisies on the table next to a blue bowl of water. Because magic! Thank you, Mother, she said. You're welcome, said the house. Is Father home yet? asked Star. Not yet, but he will be home soon, said the house. Good, said Star. Then I can go outside. Morning passed. Star played hide-and-seek inside with Dixie for a while, but there weren't enough places in the little house to hide. Finally, Dixie grew bored and flew away. Star poked her head out of the window and said, When's Father coming? I want to go out with Dixie. Shh, said her mother. Look what's coming out of the woods. Dixie looked towards the woods and saw a big green dragon slinking along the ground. Funny, Dixie just flew off. So, who is Mother talking to? Hmm. Yes, a slight typo there, I believe. 
Also, if you're going to nitpick what's around the house, how about what that manger of hay and that bucket of water outside the house? Yep. If they draw a door on it at some point, I'm going to laugh. What should I do? She whispered, proving that it was Star and not Dixie. Get under the table and stay still, said the house. The dragon crept up to the house and looked inside. Star heard and felt its hot, hungry breath. She saw a dragon paw reach in through the window, stretch around the room, and then withdraw. As Star heard the dragon lumber off to the woods, she felt her house cool and relax. Yeah, we can finally see the inside of the house in these two pictures. And it shows the dragon tearing the tablecloth. Whoops. Oh, are those daisies? Yes. I remember, she had them for breakfast. Yeah, I was making sure I was remembering that. Also, what is that daisy soup or something? Probably grains. Or oats, yeah. Uh, I don't know why unicorns would need a set of dishes. China? Yeah. Especially since this is the house spell, and so supposedly this is her mother. Yeah. House comes fully furnished. Quite. You can get up now, said the house. Star stood and went to the window. Was that dragon after me? she asked. I think so, said the house. You were very brave. Dixie flew in through a window and flapped her wings happily. Star, she said, your horn has started to grow. Star looked in a mirror and found that, sure enough, there was a stubby one-inch horn on her forehead. Now when Father gets back, I can help him with the spell, she said proudly. But he's not back, said the house, and your horn is not fully grown. Okay, apparently the house has eyes. Apparently. Well, it's been pointed out before that the house can't see because the house said, look, there's a dragon. But that's exterior. This now means that the house can see inside of itself. I almost want to say, ew? <laughs> or are we talking about spiritual here? I'm seeing this inside myself. Wait with me so you can see it grow, said Star to Dixie. She and Dixie sat for an hour and waited. Well, asked Star. It hasn't grown a bit, said Dixie, flying away. Star was upset. What makes it grow? She asked the four walls around her. Bravery said her mother. Star looked in the mirror and tried thinking brave thoughts, but that didn't help at all. Her horn was still only one inch long. Star flopped down on her bed and felt angry. She was mad at the dragons, mad at her horn, and mad at the house spell that kept her inside where she couldn't do anything brave at all. Just then, Dixie flew in through the window. Your father and the other unicorns are trapped in a cave near the waterfall, she said. Whoops, that could be a problem. That only a brave little unicorn can solve. I wonder who that would be. Ouch! <laughs> yeah. Please don't elaborate on that until after I read. Yep. <laughs> Mother, did you hear that? cried Star. The house didn't answer. Why won't you answer me? yelled Star. She paced around her table restlessly. I've got to help father, she said. Star stuck her head through a window and pushed. Stop, cried the house. Star stopped pushing. Why, she asked. Because it's dangerous, answered her mother. But how can I help father if I don't get out, asked Star. You're just a baby, said her mother. Not anymore, said Star. With that, she pushed again at the window. The house cried out, but Star kept pushing. Finally, she pushed so hard that the window broke. And Star fell through. She was now outside. Ouch. The illustration is much more than just a window breaking. Also, it was stated at the beginning the house was her mother. The woman had to give birth to her once. Do we really have to go through that kind of pain again? Yeah, I was just thinking, is, that, is this symbolizing something here? Possibly. Possibly. Like, and her horn grew three sizes that day. Yes, and there are dragon paw prints in the cobblestone path. Heavy dragon. Star looked at the broken house and said, I'm sorry. Then she rushed after Dixie in a fast, straight line through the woods. When they reached the stream that led to the waterfall, they stopped. Star felt as if her legs had turned to stone. What's the matter? asked Dixie. I can't move, said Star. I want to go on to find father, but I also want to go back and see if my mother's all right. Don't worry about me, said a familiar voice. I'm right behind you. 
Mother, I'm so glad to see you, said Star. I'm sorry I ran away. Her mother whinnied and said, My dear, you did what you had to do, and I am proud of you. Seriously? Do you feel any different now? Your horn's longer, said Dixie. It is, asked Star. How much? It's this long now, said Dixie, holding her wings about three inches apart. But it's not long enough, said her mother. Still, it should grow more. Now come, we must find father. Okay, two pages ago, it was stay inside and no, you can't help. Just like pacing and, and eat children's thing. They usually like get rid of that when they need to get the story moving. Instead of gradually transition the pacing properly. Because I think kids don't have that much of attention. Star, her mother, and Dixie followed the stream until they reached a narrow waterfall in a cool glade. Where is this cave? asked Mother Unicorn. Behind the waterfall, said Dixie. Ten dragons are guarding the entrance. What's happening? Where are these trees coming from? Very pretty illustrations in this book. Very lovely. Quite detailed. Mother Unicorn, Dixie, and Star stared in disbelief as trees grew swiftly in a circle around them. The trees were so close together that Star and her mother, who could not fly like Dixie, were trapped. Mother looks a bit less blonde here. Also, she lost the flowers. I guess I'll see some of them in her hair, but you can kind of think that they would be ripped out as she runs along. Mm -hmm. And it's probably just lighting. It's evil magic, said Mother Unicorn. Don't be afraid, Star. Just watch what I do and copy me. Mother Unicorn dug quietly in the ground with her long horn. Star did the same with her short horn. Soon, Mother Unicorn hit something. Roots, she said. Good. She rubbed the roots with her horn, and as she did, a tree near her began to giggle and shake. They're tickling the trees with their horns. Yes. Okay. Star found a root and rubbed it too. Two trees doubled up with laughter. Next time they do that, jump over them, said Mother Unicorn. Star rubbed some more, and three trees bent to the ground with giggles. I can actually see faces and hands on the trees, like this one right in the center here. It looks like it's doing the ah oh, ha oh, oh. <clears throat> Yes. Star and her mother jumped and soared over their quivering leaves. That was fun, said Star, landing on the ground next to Dixie. You don't always have to fight your way out of a trap, said Mother Unicorn. Well, let's rub that lesson in right there. <laughs> Sometimes you can tickle your way out. You did a good job, Star. You were very brave. And your horn's longer, said Dixie. Yes, it's almost fully grown, said Mother Unicorn. Apparently there's a standard size for an adult horn. Apparently. One more brave act should do it. Come, let's sneak up on the dragons. That doesn't sound brave. That sounds suicidal. Well, sneaking up, if you can manage it, is a very nice tactic. You know, the element of surprise and all. Dixie, Star, and her mother tiptoed around the waterfall and saw the opening to the cave. Where are the ten dragons? asked Mother Unicorn. Perhaps they're in the cave, said Star. Quietly, she and the others walked nearer to the cave. Though Star was ready to do something brave, she was also very afraid. Everything was much too quiet. Much, much too quiet. Suddenly, a unicorn popped his head out of the cave entrance. It's father, said Star. She and her mother ran up to him. In the cave, quickly, he said. Inside the cave were the five other unicorns. The cave now held the last eight unicorns in the world. And then there was a rock slide and the story ended. Ouch. Spoil it for everyone. Okay. You know that's not how it goes. Of course not. Even though in this children's book, we had a dragon kill a unicorn. And take its horn. Mm-hmm. How fine you look with your horn, Star's father said to her. But from the disappointment in his eyes, Star knew that her horn wasn't fully grown. She already knew that. She wouldn't be able to help her father with his spell after all. Star shut her eyes to squeeze back tears. Just then, she heard a hideous noise and felt a terrible heat. Whoops. Opening her eyes, she saw ten huge dragons creeping into the cave. Silly, stupid unicorn, said one of them. You think you're so smart, but you're really stupid. Redundancy much? You just ran into a cave with no way out. We've got you trapped in here. You can't tickle your way out, so don't even try. Uh-huh. 
So apparently dragons aren't ticklish. Yeah, uh, or they were referring back to the whole tickling the trees thing, but okay. Yeah, well, it was obviously a reference to that, but I'm saying apparently you can't tickle your way past a dragon, so apparently dragons aren't ticklish. Uh, depends on the dragon you're talking to. Oh, we're, we're talking to the ten that want to get rid of the last eight unicorns in the world. Yep. The dragons crept closer. It was awful how slowly they came and how hot their fiery breath made the air in the cave. Star felt her skin tighten with heat. Even her new horn burned like a hot stick on her forehead. Suddenly, the thought of her horn made Star know what to do. Stop where you are, she cried, jumping in the air and landing close to the dragons. Um, okay? The dragons, who were surprised that a little baby unicorn had jumped at them, stopped moving, and for a brief moment, they held their breaths. In that moment, Star's horn grew all the way. So apparently a suicidal rush at ten dragons counts as an act of bravery. Turn, said her father. Star turned and let the seven other unicorns touch her horn with theirs. At that moment, when all eight points touched, a spark flashed in the air, and the dragons sat back on their haunches. They looked at each other in surprise. What are we doing in here? One of them said. Our unicorn friends don't like the heat, said another. Let's go outside and play where it's cooler. So, is this a brainwashing spell? Or did it just revert them back when they were more friendly? I don't know. Well, it was specifically the spell for turning enemies into friends. The dragons weren't their enemies until they were affected by the evil magic, but it's not a purification spell. So it's a I force you to be my friend spell. Ah, kind of like in My Little Pony. They never used that spell, but... Mm -hmm. Also, just one brief moment, these are the last eight unicorns in the world, and it's mother, father, star, and everyone else is an aunt or an uncle. I think we're stuck with eight unicorns. Yeah, let's hope they have long lives. Mm -hmm. The eight horn friendship spell for changing enemies into friends had worked, but it only worked because Star, the baby unicorn, had grown up just in time. From that day on, the dragons and the unicorns were friends. The dragons never grew jealous of the unicorns because they knew that having a unicorn for a friend was like having your own personal magician. Star became friends with a baby dragon named Moon. Star, Moon, okay, we get it. Yeah, and there's a moon crest on the dragon's forehead. His name was Moon because he had a moon shape on his forehead. Yep, there we go. The only trouble with Moon was that his dragon wings hadn't grown yet. But that's a story for another time. Uh, sure. Yes. It was actually quite a while before I got the sequel book. Ah, so... What were your thoughts on this book when you first read it, or thoughts now? I enjoyed it a lot when I was little because it had really nice illustrations. Oh yeah, they are very nice. But the whole thing with the house spell, it didn't make sense then. Doesn't it, make sense now. No. And that last act of bravery, even as a kid, I thought that was a stupid suicidal charge. I just didn't have the words for it then. Ah. It mainly fell under the category just of stupid, and how is that brave? And this has been an Ember's Reading Room rendition of The Baby Unicorn by Jean and Claude Marzolo, illustrated by R.J. Blake. Thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed this, please check out other episodes in the Ember's Reading Room series. Also, there are other videos on our channel, mostly pop culture, that you may enjoy. Please subscribe so that you can continue to get notified when new episodes go up. To support this channel financially, please consider making a donation through Patreon or Coffee. Specific to the Ember's Reading Room video entries, there is an Amazon link to the book being read and a referral link to Ebates, which is a shopping rebate site. Amazon and Ebates are not sponsors or in any way affiliated with Ember's Reading Room or any content of the Lux Analysis channel.